when, when I, uh, by the time I arrived at the Land Locomotion Laboratory, Becker's first book, Theory of Land Locomotion, had, already pub had been already published. And, as far, and it was a very comprehensive book. It had about 346 references, so you can imagine that he really studied the literature and included everything that possible that he could think of. But what I was mostly interested in was how he handled in this book the rigid wheel soil interaction. And because that's what we were really working on in those days. Well, as you all know, the, in that book, the pressure on the penetration, penetrating plate was handled as P, the pressure equals K times Z to the N, where K was just kind of some kind of a factor, Z was the sinkage, and N was supposed to have something to do with soil properties. Uh, it was by 57, uh, Pepe realized that this is not really uh, adequate, and instead of using just a simple K factor, he, he, he invented an expression called K sub C over B plus K sub phi, and then multiplied by Z, Z to the N. So K sub C was supposed to have something to do with the cohesion, and K sub phi with friction, and the B was a characteristic dimension of the penetrating plate, and that Supposed, this was supposed not was supposed to be independent from the plate size, but it was not. Uh, it, but when when you carry out experiments, penetration experiments with two different plates, and apply this formula and plot it on a log log paper, you're supposed to have two parallel lines. Yeah. And. and, and most of the time I couldn't get that, so <laughs> right. let's leave it that way. <laughs> but anyway, using this formula, he, he is derived in, the, in his book <clears throat> um, equations for sinkage and rolling resistance. He assumed that the pressure on the penetrating plate at a certain depth is the same as the normal pressure acting against a rolling wheel at the same depth, which resulted, unfortunately, I have been retired and you know, I don't have the facilities at home to create these fancy uh, projections, but this, this creates a, a pressure distribution like this. Yeah. In the field, in yeah. The, field, yeah. the bottom is the it's maximum right. pressure and then nothing, just a jump. This was proven to be in, uh, not true. First, first, to my knowledge, by Colonel Seva, mentioned by Dr. Schlippowitz, who spent, a, who was the second person who spent a year at the land local lab after Alan Reeves went home, and he he, he ran tests, uh, rigid view tests in one of our smaller soybeans, and had a pressure measuring embedded into the in the surface of the wheel, and, and of course the distribution was like this. So, uh, so much for that. Now, Becker also knew that uh, shear stresses are important in, in, in a, when you're talking about a rolling wheel in, in soft soil. And I'm quoting from his book, he says that it is interesting it is an interesting coincidence that the form of the soil shear curve shown in figure 10 is identical of the form, or to the form of the curves pertaining to the displacement and time of an aperiodic vibration. So, a curve of an aperiodic vibration, displacement versus time, you know, goes up and then like that. Well, if you carry out shear stress, they also look like that. So I then thought, okay, let's take the uh, damping in the aperiodic uh, vibration equation and just call it case of two and name it as a soil, soil parameter. And uh, also the uh, frequency term 
was replaced by k sub 1. So now he had k sub c, k sub phi, and of course uh, c and uh, uh, cohesion and friction, angle of friction, and then these two parameters, six parameters. And uh, this is how he handled the problem. The, the question whether normal pressures calculated like that and shear stresses calculated as I just can be just superimposed and of course that's probably not true either. So um, I, I can quote a paper by Windig in, in the Journal of Volume 5, Number 3, where he went through and, and, and really disproved all this. Uh, returning to that case, case of 1 and case of 2, case of 2, by the way, it was not possible really to, to, to ascertain a numerical value for case of 1 and case of 2, case of 2, because I don't remember all the details, but you had to, again, make plots on log log, log, log paper, and you know, if you have, have high values there, then you can make an, an open error of order of a hundred, by because everything is so condensed on a, on a log, log log paper. So I came up with an expression instead of a simpler expression, uh, which many people have been using since then, and it has a, what we call a tangent modulus in it. It's a, the Coulomb expression times one minus e to the minus g over k, where k are this tangent modulus, it's really the tangent of the initial part of the curve. Now, I must admit that even that is just a curve fitting parameter. It's not really a soil parameter. 